your energy forecast for September 2024. So on September 2nd, we are going to have our third astro shift take place here in this very brand new month. And of course, if you don't know what I'm talking about here yesterday on the first, we had Uranus go retrograde. We had Pluto already retrograde, but creep back into the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. So I am going to recommend if you haven't already to take a listen to that particular energy forecast, download your Virgo season ego capture what's going on for you because those particular shifts are going to have a major impact on this particular new moon in Virgo and how we kind of take a look at things, how we analyze and examine certain areas of our lives because of course Uranus and Pluto now retrograde, we are removing, we are eliminating the physical structures, foundations, roles, responsibilities of the old world, the old reality that the old version of self has created. So with this, a new perspective, a new level of awareness is going to form. And you definitely want to stay ahead of the game by, of course, downloading your Zodiac forecast for the month of September so that you know where these energy shifts are taking place. So September 2nd, we are feeding off of the disruption, the destabilizing energies that began with Uranus's retrograde and Pluto creeping back into that Capricorn energy. Here on the 2nd, we are going to have this new moon pop off at 11 degrees, four minutes of Virgo energy, and it will reach its maximum potency at 9.56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So of course, we are taking a good look at the rulership over this particular new moon in Virgo, which of course would be Mercury. Mercury still in his post retrograde shadow period. He's making his way through Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We're retracing our steps. We've had major epiphanies pop off, major wild card events thrown at us over this last month ish. And now we are again kind of moving forward very slowly, but we're revisiting, reevaluating matters of the heart. What we're really passionate about what we really want to do with our lives and with that perspective we have to take a good look at our physical realms how the present day is actually kind of structured and whether or not our current day-to-day lives our routines the aspects in our physical realm are promoting supporting encouraging these new wants needs and desires or Do we have to remove some of these aspects, restructure, rearrange, redesign our physical realms in order to provide a space for us to actually move on and move forward? So, of course, the new moon is the dark phase of the moon. There's no illumination of light in the sky. We have to sit in the funk. We have to realize where certain areas of our lives have been crazy and chaotic and where it is that we need to bring them into order. We have to take a good look at where it is that our mental plane is oriented to, the inner dialogue, the inner narrative that we have, what we're pouring a lot of time, energy, and attention into because the Virgo energy ruled over by Mercury is an earth sign. So what we focus on, good, bad, or otherwise, is what we manifest into matter, into the physical form. So there's a lot going on. We become illuminated in the dark phase of the moon of situations of circumstances that we no longer want to pour into, that we can no longer tolerate, that we no longer want to experience. And of course, the whole point of this is to illuminate where we could come up with a better option, better alternative to some of the things that obviously aren't working for us. And because the Virgo energy is very analytical, highly critical of oneself, of one's life, this is where discernment comes in, in order to kind of humble ourselves from a lot of the activations that we received throughout Leo season. We had those big dreams. We had this overly confident disposition and demeanor to break away, to pivot into a new path, into a new pursuit of happiness. The Virgo energy, of course, needs to come up with the plan, a strategy on how it is that we're going to, again, and pursue said goals, visions, and dreams, but get very real, get very raw, get very vulnerable with what is working, what is not. Who and what needs to stay needs to go. We are in the process of elimination. And of course, the Virgo energy precedes the Libra energy. And that Libra energy that we will be moving into in about a month will help us to find peace and harmony and balance in the adjustments that we will be making throughout Virgo season. 
So the new moon or the dark phase of the moon is illuminating for us what isn't working and therefore what it is that we could do better, where it is that we can make improvements to restructure how it is that we're moving throughout our day. Again, a reminder, the habits that you have in the run of your day, the amount of time and energy and attention spent on certain aspects in the run of your day are setting you up either for success or for failure, trying to get to where it is that you desire to be. So just think of that greater, grander picture, the vision, the dream, that is the end goal. The Virgo energy is going to help us break up the steps needed, the puzzle pieces needed in order for us to actually get in alignment with that goal, dream, and vision. So if you haven't downloaded the moon guide as of yet, I am definitely going to recommend you do so. That is going to kind of keep you in alignment with this particular energy and really kind of give you some journal prompts to do a deep dive, to do the shadow work, to uncover the energy blockages that, of course, we have to be illuminated to under these moon events in order to make a change. So in that particular moon guide, you're going to realize that there are a lot of tough aspects really popping off under this new moon in Virgo. And let me again, just remind you that the Virgo energy needs to identify the problem in order to fix it, heal it and repair it. So it's not really surprising that we have as many tension filled, conflicting filled aspects popping off under this particular moon event. Because again, we have some adjustment to do. We are in a mutable season. Mutability means we have to be flexible, we have to observe, we have to analyze, we have to really discern where it is that, again, improvements, healings need to be had, need to be made before we can actually move on into a different path. So we're experimenting, we are kind of tinkering with making these adjustments in order for us to grow, for us to heal, for us to move on. So of course, this Virgo energy very rooted in healthy habits. We are very focused on the health and wellness of our current disposition, especially where our mental health is concerned. We need to do better. Yes, that Virgo energy also represents where it is that we show up in the world and be of work and service to other people. But again, are we the slave to the other people? Are we a slave to our practices? Are we so caught up with being there to help other people through their situations and circumstances that we put our own wants, needs, and desires on the back burner? And of course, that's never a good thing. We have to fill up our own cup. We have to be operating at our 100% in order to give any part of our away in trying to help other people. This whole jam is about where it is that we can kind of make the finer tweaks, if you will, in our mindset, in our health and wellness habits, in our day-to-day -day lives, where, you know, showing up and being of service and work to other people, where our tasks, our chores, our roles, our responsibilities are concerned, where it is that we have to kind of balance that particular energy so that we're reserving enough energy for ourselves. Now, we have a very harsh interaction with, of course, Saturn, who's sitting across the street from the Virgo energy in Pisces energy. And Saturn, of course, he is the Lord of Karma. He does rule over roles and responsibilities, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He is retrograde at this particular juncture, which means that there's an inner reflection going on on where it is that we need to boss up, where it is that we need to do better, where it is that we need to be better, where it is that we need to build better, Again, structures, foundations, routines for ourselves in order for us to stay our happiest, our healthiest version of self. So of course, a new moon is just as much an ending as it is a beginning. And we do have to take a good look at the problematic areas of life in order to bring them to an end to a close. And in the place of those particular aspects, what are we going to build that is an improvement? What are we going to do that is going to help ourselves, help our lives, help us actually move on? We have to do a little bit better. We have to get our shit together. We have to get organized. So of course, this is definitely going to have a huge pressure on the mental plane. If you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast, for this week, I'm going to recommend you do so that you understand where the physical symptoms will be popping off due to this particular energy. And of course, with all of the astro shifts going on in the first week of September, we definitely have to learn how to roll 
instead of be dragged. So this particular moon event is kind of helping us to detox, to purify, to eliminate, to purge the old aspects of the old realm, the old reality in order for us to clear the space, in order for us to build something better in the place of the things that were not working, were not supporting us, were not encouraging us to be our best selves, to move on into a different path. So of course, it all starts with how we're waking up, how we're moving throughout our day, how we're taking care of ourselves, how we're making time for ourselves versus the time that we so easily make for other people. And of course, we need a new foundation, a new structure set before we get thrown into eclipse season, which is coming at us. If you haven't listened to the September energy forecast, I'm going to recommend you do that so that you know how all of these energetic shifts are essentially a domino effect and why there's going to be an intense focus on our mental plane and on restructuring, redesigning our physical realms now. Because again, we don't have a very big, large window of time or opportunity for us to be in power and in control. So the least that we could do at this particular juncture is get a grip over our mental plane. Then we can actually start thinking of alternatives of making changes and adjustments to our physical realm. All of this will be definitely impacted and influenced by the different energy shifts coming up until we get thrown into that eclipse energy. So of course, we have to be very kind to ourselves as we're going through this picking apart process. Um, The Virgo energy does have a highly judgmental, highly critical inner dialogue and narrative, especially when we are casting judgment upon ourselves. And so we have to be kind, we have to be gentle, we have to realize that we're going through an adjustment period. And of course, you know, that high level of perfectionism that gets triggered and activated with the Virgo energy, we have to reframe that. Nobody is good at doing something that they have never done before. And so, you know, adjustment periods are never fun. We can get, we definitely can get discouraged. But again, with Uranus now retrograde, Pluto retrograde back in that Capricorn energy, that's a lot of Earth energy. We talked about this in the Ascension forecast. And so that we can expect to be heavy, to be weighted, not only in our physical form, but in our mental narrative as well. So there's definitely a lot going on. I'm going to encourage you to kind of, you know, take in all the information, all the different resources that I've made available for this particular chapter of our lives to kind of guide you, assist you in what September is going to be. And in true Virgo fashion, we are wasting no time.